Well, today I'm going to uncover the car and start sanding it, getting it ready for paint, and see how I come along. But I don't like to bore people with sanding. Sanding is what it is, time-consuming and really no excitement in it whatsoever. Not much entertainment value either. But uh, I thought I'd show you some tools I have in my shop. These are homemade tools. <coughs> uh, one is my dad's. He, uh, well, I don't want to say it's my dad's. It's actually mine. But one day my dad came to me and he said, hey, I got these parts in the back of the truck and I want you to build me something out of them. And I'm looking back at his truck and I'm like, okay, he's got a spare tire, a drive shaft, a brake rotor. What the hell does he want me to build? Well, this is what he wanted me to build. <laughs> he brought a spare tire a pulley off the front of a car, a drive shaft, which you can see the drive shaft goes up into the hub, and a brake rotor. I said he wanted a pedestal for a wire brush. I said, well, I'm not the best welder in the world, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So I welded this thing up. And basically, all you do is you take the plug, plug it in, and voila, you got a wire brush. Nice little stand. Some place to rest your foot on while you're working on things. It's kind of nice. Um, I'm not using it as a wire brush. I actually take the brush off and I'll put three small buffing pads on there and I'll use it to buff chrome. And it really, really does a good job buffing chrome. It's a nice little thing, you know. Funny thing is, he had me build it. I got it all done, took it over to drop it off at his place because, well, why are you bringing it over here for? I said, well, you want me to build this? And he goes, yeah, for you for your birthday. I said, oh, this is my birthday present. I got to build my own birthday present. But, you know, I've had this thing for, I don't know, 15 years. I'm pretty happy with it. And the other tool I'm going to show you is, like, unbelievably cool. My father-in-law gifted it to me. He gave it to me, asked if I wanted it. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I want it. And this is what it is. This is an eight-foot drill press now first glance you go oh, it's just an old drill press but you really got to look close because up here you have an old old manual transmission and an old rear axle within inches of each other and you got a big old electrical motor that plugs in and it's an automatic feed you got this big lever coming off here, going to the transmission. And the way it works is that's neutral. Neutral, yeah, it don't move. But put it in first, and you got first gear. Pretty crazy, huh? Now then you flip it over to second. Now you got second gear. That's pretty cool. Better yet, you can go over. Now you got third. Now you're really hauling some ass there. But the really crazy thing is, you can put it in reverse. Yeah, it goes backwards. Because the transmission, three speed. Is that crazy or what? And has this great, if you release the automatic feed to manually lower it. If you hook up the feed, it will run on its own, but I don't have a belt on there at the moment. No belt. But I use this a lot. This is really a cool tool. I mean, how could you not take this if someone offered it to you? You know, handmade, great technology, thought. You know, this is something you look at and you go, man, that's someone that had ingenuity. That's someone that probably wasn't book smart but had common sense and knew how things worked. That's, it's just cool. You know, I've had people offer to buy it, but this is not for sale. This was a gift and it's not for sale. And if I sold it, what the hell would I use? This is, this is cool. This is really, really cool thing. But yeah, I thought I'd show you a couple of things. You know, it's got an adjustable table. You just unlock it, turn the handle, and this will raise up and down. You got your chuck key. Back here, you got your little on-off electrical box. Pretty cool. And sometimes I'll slide this table out of the way, which 
let me loosen this up. I could probably show you, but you can slide this table to the side like that. And I'll hook my paint shaker up on here. Before I start sanding this car, that one spot that showed up, um, not sure why, I'm gonna go ahead and primer this. I've just sanded it down, got it all knocked down. I'm not sure why this area chose the lift. Well, now I gotta wipe it down again because I just touched it. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it lifted, but we're gonna put this in primer so I can go ahead and start wet sanding the rest of this car. But yeah, let's get this taken care of. And like that, primered. Get this paper pulled off and get ready to start sanding. Yay, yay, yay. One other thing, in case I didn't mention it, I do use guide coat. I prefer the powder over the aerosol. It's just better for me. I like it. The powder's better as far as I'm concerned. And this is all I use. It's just a nice little powder coat. Put it on. Uh, I've heard people use spray paint, cheap spray paint. But for me, I don't want to use the spray paint because it's an aerosol and you're just introducing another chemical into your mix and you really don't need another chemical in your mix. This dry stuff, just dry powder, blow it off once you're done. Just my two cents. Maybe a little heavy on the guide coat, but you guys get the idea. I've already got the roof done, the trunk. I did find a spot on the roof, which I'll have to take care of after I get the rest of the car done. Now I'm just gonna keep on moving here. I'm not gonna put any more video up of me putting down this uh, guide coat or sanding. It's just boring, like I said. Uh, hey, if you like what I do and you wanna see more, please subscribe. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more to come yet as I keep moving along. Later. Thanks for watching.